Yeah, we're well, glad to know you're still there. Uh, right now, we're talking about, uh, we'll be talking with uh, Mr. Abraham Great, a public affairs analyst, and we're looking at the fact that a new report has, has listed uh, top states with poor internally generated revenue. Mr. Great, good morning and welcome to the program. Good morning and thank you for having me. We have 36 states and the federal capital territory, which almost is a state uh, because it operates like a state almost. Um, but we've seen from the report that came out that some of these states, if they were not going to Abuja every month to go and get revenue cap in hand, they wouldn't survive because of the kind of uh, internally generated revenue that we see from that state. Let's start with how you see that report and uh, how you place that against the viability of these states. Um, I mean, reading the report, I was quite perturbed um, to see some of the state that, I mean, if you have 36 states in a country, one state would always be the highest performing state, you know, there will be states that, you know, year in, year out might be at the bottom, depending on the positioning of the state, the um, resources that are available for the states to become viable. Uh, but to see states like Bielsa becoming nearly insolvent is quite pathetic, is disturbing, is damning. You know, I don't know how we got into a state that, uh, one of the states that produced the golden egg for the country can be in such a state that it's almost uh, insolvent. And that well. says a I lot to well. us about the way we look at the economy of our country. It means that the natural resources that have been generated in state like uh, Bielsa may be the sole uh, focus uh, of, of that state. Maybe that's where the stakeholders of that state put most of their head uh, you know, like it's been said, don't put your head in one basket. But it's also not as damning as the report may say, because it also presents us an opportunity to be able to review uh, governance in the country. Uh, you know, up till this moment, you know, what we've been having in most of the state or politically we've been having in Nigeria is um, people buying for offices, like executive offices, with no corporate governance experience, with no business experience per se. You know, people are, they feel people feel entitled that look, I've been part of this state for long, or I'm a child of this state, I'm an indigent of this state, I'm gonna make money, I'm gonna, you know, spend money on politics and I'm gonna become the executive governor with zero, you know, uh, private sector, public governance experience, be able to know how to generate revenue, how to develop the, uh, you know, human capital in that state. So we are at the very crucial stage in our country where every state has to really uh, improve on what they are, you know, uh, generating internally. Well, I don't know. Another state that surprised me, you just mentioned by Elsa, is a, is a quite bomb state. Uh, we saw the internally generated revenue in a quite from a quibum state and it was nothing to write home about but there are some of the highest earners from the federation uh account you know, for, you know so is it is it an attribute of uh lack of innovation on the part of the successive governors or it's a product of uh, uh the, the oil that comes from their land, destroying the kind of businesses that they could have done. For instance, in Bielsa State, they are very they are a fishing tribe, and they can't do that because of the oil spills and all those kind of things. So where do you get tax from? Where do you get money from when the people cannot do what they are naturally supposed to be doing? So what would you attribute this to? Will you attribute it to non -innovation, uh, lack of innovation or the destruction of their livelihood in, that in those states? First, you must realize that to succeed, you have to turn excuses uh, into solution. Uh, you know, every problem, present within every problem is a solution. So to keep staring at the problem and to keep talking about the problem is to magnify the problem and the problem is not gonna go away. A problem that keeps staring at you is telling you that inherent within it, is the is a solution 
So what you need is you need minds to come together. You need a mastermind of the best of the minds in that state to be able to, you know, see how. You know, the case study of Lagos is a very uh, is, is a very good example uh, for us. What is the viability of Lagos before 1999? You know, a lot of people will say, oh, Lord Lugard, you know, developed Lagos or what have you. I mean, I mean, I was born, raised in Lagos. And I understand, I see, yes, by the time Nigeria will be getting into democracy, I was no longer living in the country, uh, you know, in 1999, but I came a lot into the country from that time into the year I was there for the inauguration and stuff, like, even in 1999. So I'm always back in Nigeria. And you will see that the tribulation that Lagos faced at the time, uh, you know, after the military rule, and federal location was withheld at some point, it made the state to become creative, to realize that every state that must, that must prosper or that must succeed must understand how to crack the code of tax, public tax, corporate tax, individual tax. No, you look at countries that we all celebrate today, you look at the United Kingdom, for example, what natural resources has the United Kingdom got? The United Kingdom hasn't got gold. They haven't got, uh, um, they haven't got uh, crude oil. They haven't got lithium. They haven't got most of what we, uh, each of our states have. But one thing that the state and the country generates income on is taxes. You know, Nigeria has to, I don't know how we, maybe they have to put all the governors together, or maybe each party, every party, every major party in the country has to do more in developing its candidate. Number one, in identifying the right candidate that have the right relevant experience to be able to help that state to, uh, uh, to, to become economically viable, not just people vying for position and will occupy it and just be waiting for the federal revenue to come in. Also, uh, uh, federal government has a, a part in this also, to help some of those states to develop infrastructures, to develop human capital within that state, to help that state to be able to improve on their uh, um, internally generated revenue. Now, sometimes, this is what I found in the case of Nigeria, sometimes those revenue are there, but due to corruption, they are locked within the state, within a few ends. So this also, the, I think Nigeria just needs to go into full automation. What do you mean full automation? Okay. Again, going back to the case study of Lagos, one of the things that you see that the, the governor, there, who is now the president of the country, is that they brought in Oracle uh, into the country and then all the federal agencies, every parastatus became auto, fully automated. So you will still find that there are you know, agencies in some states that the revenues are being kept within uh, uh, within that sector, within that uh, uh, agency. You see, you will still see that in some sector, money is still crossing into individual hands. We need to go into full automation where the uh, revenue collection of each state or each local government is seamlessly going through a process that directly has no, I mean, we do less of cash and the system goes through an auto, uh, automated uh, uh, system. Number one, it becomes scientific. It helps for planning. They'll be able to have at least a quantitative analysis of where we are. Everything that you can turn into science, you can simulate for growth and you, you can check for the future. Okay, uh, well, you get my point there. Yes, I do. I do. I do get your point. But you, you did mention something about corruption, and I know I don't know how it is going to go away. Everything is tied to corruption now. Um, if you were president, uh, just before we wrap up, if you were president, what would you do to stem corruption? You know, corruption has been a thing that we, have, you know, first of all, I would say that corruption is everywhere. Yeah. Uh, the intention of the federal government. The federal government must be intentional about the federal character. And some of these things, you know, I, I support the current government, but I also must warn about the optics of the government. 
because sometimes the way uh, the way we portray you know ourselves you know as government affect the way we raise people in in the country i give you an example when politicians are flamboyant it gives an impression of how a human being should be in that country in nigeria an average person or a successful person is seen with four some people have 20 cars so an average person that is going on growing up from primary school secondary school think that they are not successful until they have two or three cars you must have a mercedes you must have a, a lexus you must have this you must have. our definition of what success is must be redefined that that's one and number two is that there must be transparency if you look at what is going on right now in nigeria even if government doesn't want to be uh, uh, transparent, people are forcing her because people are going into the account of the uh, of the state, of the federal government, of the different agency. People are, you know, uh, 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 scrutinizing, you know, budget at this point. So before we get to that point where everything is becoming porous, mm -hmm. I think government, both on the federal level and on the state level, must be transparent. And I'm going to give the kudos again to um, state like Lagos State. You may criticize Lagos for items on the budget, uh, you know, and their reporting. But the fact that they are making this reporting available is a step in the right direction. Yeah. And yeah, now yeah. they now know that all eyes are on these items, you realize that things will start getting better and better. Mm. The same thing, Senate has to be quite transparent. We have all known for many years that Nigerians call the, the, the fiscal budget is a national cake. Yeah. That when we talk about the national cake syndrome in Nigeria, what you're talking about is the size of the budget. Yeah, let's it's stop like it. yeah. it, it's it's like a you know, the, the Nigerian budget is like a cake that we bake once or twice in a year. And what you have is that you have individuals who are experts in cutting this cake. So each person comes to the table with a knife and a plate to take what is there. Okay. And that okay. is through procurement. Okay. So our procurement act needs to go through complete, oh, yeah. I mean, I was complete, we need to overhaul the okay. uh, uh, pro procurement act, but we also have to, you know, streamline procurement, okay. automate procurement and ensure performance. Okay, thank you very much. Transparency is very important and uh, uh, making sure that uh, we do the right thing at all the time, or, or at all times. Thank you so much, Abraham. Great for coming on the show. It's uh, unfortunate this is where we have to wrap up this morning. It's really a privilege. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Uh, we were talking with Abraham, a great public affairs analyst uh, who has joined us this morning. We're going to uh, draw the curtain here and take the news at nine o'clock. Until we meet again tomorrow, I'd like to say it was a pleasure being with you. My name is Nyam Gul Bye for now.